Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Drivers of Reaction module. This is video number eight, and we're just going to extend our previous video where we introduced Hess's Law by looking at just a couple of applications of Hess's Law. The main thing that we need to look at here is to A, understand when we need to use the law and also how uh, to make sure that we can get the calculations correct each time. So the main thing we need to do is to use Hess's law to calculate enthalpy change. And this is for a reaction when we can't either directly measure the enthalpy change or where we have a number of steps uh, for other reactions that can be summed together to give us the process uh, that we're looking for. There's a couple of important things that we need to make sure that we remember when we are uh, applying Hess's law in different situations. The first thing is if we reverse a reaction, that is if we write the uh, reaction in the opposite direction, then we have to reverse the sign of the delta H value. So I've got a, an equation here, which is basically just the pop test. So a combination of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas produces water. Uh, and this gives us a delta H value, which we know of minus 241.8 kilojoules per mole. So if we were to take the first of these and say, okay, what happens if we reverse the reaction? Then we have to reverse the delta H sign. So that's fairly easy. So if we underneath write the reverse of this, so water gas producing hydrogen gas and half a mole of oxygen gas, would then have a delta H value of plus 241.8 kilojoules per mole. Now this is very important. Um, uh, and I guess uh, something that's fairly obvious to, or hopefully it's fairly obvious to you when you look at energy profile diagrams. So if we were to draw an energy profile diagram, just a very simple one, this one is a negative value. So therefore it's an exothermic. So it'll come down here. So this would be our activation energy here and this would be our delta H value here. And obviously, if we're going to go back the other way, then we're actually going to go up, and therefore we're going to have an endothermic or a positive um, value for our delta H. Likewise, if we change the number of moles, we also have to change delta H. So if I leave the equation the same this time, and I write it as 2H2 gas plus O2 gas, producing 2H2O gas, then this time the delta H value that I have must be double. So the sign will be the same, but now 241.8 is going to go to 483.6 kilojoules per mole. So how does this work in practice? Well, here's a little example for you. So here's a desired reaction. This is the reaction that we want. This is the information that we've been given. How do we put this information together in order to get to the equation at the end? Well, the first thing that we notice is that the here is one of our reactants and it's here in this first equation. But our second reactant is actually in the second equation but it is here. So it is actually a product. So the first thing that I'd want to do is to reverse equation two. Now I better have a one here and a two here so we know what we're referring to. So I'm going to reverse equation two. When I reverse equation two, I have two HCl gas plus SO2 gas going to SOCl2 gas plus H2O gas. Now, because I have reversed this, the delta H value here is equal to plus 27 kilojoules per mole. Now, I'm going to write the equation one. So this was two reverse, so minus two, if you like. And then one is, as it's written, SOCl2 gas plus NiO solid to SO2 gas plus NiCl2 solid. Now, the important thing, of course, to remember is that, um, first of all, I'll bring the delta H value down as well, which is minus 150 kilojoules per mole. 
So we're pretty close now to our final answer. What we need to do though, of course, is we need to take our little, little red marker in and we need to uh, eliminate the like terms. So there's an SO2 gas here and an SO2 gas here. The same number of moles can be cancelled out. Likewise, there's an SOCl2 gas here and an SOCl2 gas here. So they too can be eliminated. What we end up with is an overall equation here, which has two HCl gas plus NiO solid going to H2O gas plus NiCl2 solid and a delta H value, which is the sum of these, uh, which when I add them up gives me minus one, two, three kilojoules per mole. This is how we apply uh, Hess's law, we can now identify that this is an exothermic reaction and we have all of the same components that we had in our original equation and we've just used some uh, information from other reactions in order to help us do this. This is how we apply Hess's law and of course it will take a little practice so make sure you do plenty of examples and thanks for watching.